اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم عرفني نفسك فإنك إن لم تعرفني نفسك لم أعرف نبيك اللهم عرفني رسولك فإنك إن لم تعرفني رسولك لم أعرف حجتك اللهم عرفني حجتك فإنك إن لم تعرفني حجتك ضللت عن ديني اللهم لا تمت متني ميتة جاهلية ولا تزغ قلبي بعد إذ هديتني برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الدين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم to carry on with our topic so basically main theme of our uh, session is uh, Ma'rifat of Allah, Ma'rifat of the Messenger, and Ma'rifat of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salatu wasalam. And before we start talking about those five components of Ma'rifat, which we had uh, said in our introduction, I would like to just give a uh, in, an introduction about our existence in, on the earth, our creation. And let's see from where did the challenge start, so that we know that uh, how long it has been and what are the struggles and who is our obvious enemy and why is he our obvious enemy because if you want to fight your enemy you need to know uh, the enemy's tactics you need to know the enemy you need to properly know and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has presented our biggest enemy an obvious enemy in the Holy Quran the problem is our enemy has made us ignore all those ayat and ponder on those ayat. That's why we fall into sins because he is not allowing us to know about him, and that's why we are going to shed uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's words on this enemy so that he can be more obvious and more exposed. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says in this ayat, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Ya Dawood. Remember, Ja'al make the Khilafat could be make of Allah and could be make of people. People they choose Khalifa like them, a fallible, a person who makes errors, mistakes. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses a Khalifa, He makes a proper role model. He chooses a proper role model and errorless and infallible. So, O Dawood. We have made you Khalifa on the earth. So, in the ayat which we mentioned last night, Allah said to angels, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. So this prophethood and the imamat 
it is a khilafat made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the earth. So it is Allah who makes the, his khalifa. People make their khalifa. Allah makes his khalifa. So there is a difference between khalifa and khalifa. We need to follow Allah's khalifa, not people's khalifa, not the one made by people. We can follow in certain political system, political to maintain the system, <coughs> the law of the land. That's something else. When people, they choose their Khalifa, they choose their president, they choose their prime minister. So we have to respect the law. But, it, but when it comes to general issues, connecting me with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, issues related to Akhirah, issues related to salvation, issues related to purification of the nafs, then I need a different type of Khalifa. Prime Minister, President, uh, leader cannot help me. I need that person who is the choice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an errorless and infallible Khalifa. So Allah says, Ya Dawood, O Dawood, we have made you Khalifa on the earth. Same like last night's ayah. So the Khilafat is a make of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khalifa of Allah must be the make of Allah. Khalifa of Rasulullah must be the make of Allah. So that's why we can say, okay, Khalifa of people could be good, could be bad. But Khalifa of Allah should be infallible because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the inner of the people and the outside of the people, the external and the inner characteristics and qualities Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of. So that's why the make of Allah is very important for me to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ بِالْحَقِّ So there's a hukumat, there's a judgment, so there's a political leadership as well. It's not only religious leadership. In Islam, the church and the state was separated after the death of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Otherwise, the church, we can say mosque, but living in the West, there's a church and the state. So the, the mosque and the state were all together in the time of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those who took the state, they were not qualified religiously to give religious direction. So they said, okay, Ali ibn Abi Talib, you are Imam. So you are our religious authority. But you are not aware of politics. You are young. You are in your 30s. What do you know about politics? So we take away the politics from you and we give you just, we leave them. So they call everybody, all the Muslims, they call Imam Ali, Karram Allah, Wajah, Imam Ali, Imam Ali. So the word of Imam was not, a, they were not able to take. Nobody says Imam Omar or Imam Abu Bakr. Nobody says Imam Muawiyah. Nobody says it does not fit. Because this all the Muslims unanimously know that what are the qualifications of Imam? Wow. So, so they can't. They say Khalifa Abu Bakr, Khalifa Omar, but they can't say Imam Omar. Mm. Imam Abu Bakr, they can't say. Mm. So there was a separation between the state and the mosque. In Western terms, state and church. So this kind of, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he tells, O Dawood, we are making you Khalifa. So the make of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is qualified for everything. Religious authority, political authority, social authority, judicial authority, all the authorities. Because we have authorities in our Maraja's uh, terms, three types of authority. The wilayat, they call wilayat al-faqih, wilayat al-faqih. Actually, there's a big misunderstanding and misconception in this issue because many people, they're ignorant about this thing. If you open the book of law of Ayatollah al umma Sayyid Ali Sistani, he mentions clearly that. So one wilayat of faqih is wilayat of ifta. A faqih has the authority to give fatwa. So this is also wilayat al faqih. The other wilayat is wilayat al qada, judiciary wilayat, courtroom, judge. So in Islam, we can't have, if it's a in Muslim community, Muslim society, we can't have a judge who is not a mujtahid. Because this authority belongs to a mujtahid. So a judge could be 
uh, a judge has to be mujtahid, he might not be a marja. Many judges in Iran, they are not marja, but they are mujtahid. They don't have tawzihul masail. When I say marja, it means uh, there's a tawzihul masail, there's a law, follow me. So many judges in Iran, they run courts, but they, are, they don't have tawzihul masail. You see? So basically, tawzihul masail, that means authority of marja'iyah. You can follow me, I take the responsibility. I give you this ruling. And the other one is in the courtroom. That's the authority, judiciary authority of the judges. So mujtahid could be marja, mujtahid could be judge. And then after Imam Khomeini rahmatullah uh, uh, new era, uh, there was a new authority. Of course, it was debated previously, but Imam Khomeini presented it, which was authority, political authority. So the same thing which our maraja, they say in courtroom, judge authority, it, uh, because in courtroom you have like few subjects, uh, you practice your authority. Okay, you are guilty, you are innocent, you this and that, and these are evidences. But political authority is like more broader on a community level. And that's what was presented by Imam Khomeini. So now they ask Ayatollah al-Ummah Sayyidi Sistani, what do you think of Wilayat al-Faqih? Means the political, the Hakimiya one, the third type. So he said, I'm not denying it. I'm not rejecting it. I don't want to practice it. But it is for those who would like to practice, they can practice. So Sayyidi Sistani is, is not against many ignorance. They just want to create fitna and fight. He said, Sayyidi Al-Fit. We ask Sayyidi al khui as well. There's a difference between a marja who doesn't want to practice and a marja who rejects. Sayyid al did not reject. We, have, we had a written fatwa. Sayyid Sistani did not reject. There is a written fatwa. He says, liman yasha. Whoever wants to practice it, he can practice it. I'm not denying it. I'm not rejecting it. As long as a mujtahid feels that he wants to practice it, he can practice. Similarly to a judge. If a mujtahid wants to practice the judiciary, will I? He can practice. Ayatullah Sistani, he says, I don't want to practice political uh, uh, will I? I don't want to practice judiciary will I? But he's qualified to. But he doesn't choose to. And he says, I'll just practice the marja'iyat wilayat of fatwa. Follow me in the fatwas. That doesn't mean that he can't. There are times... Sayyidi Sistani, Damadullah, he gave political uh, judiciary rulings. Like when uh, he was in, in UK and Najaf was surrounded. So he left UK and announced we have, to, this is like a community level fatwa, community level. We have to go and flush the armies out of Najaf al-Ashraf. We can't allow the sanctity of Najaf al-Ashraf to be violated. He left UK, he left his treatment. They said, no, you are not still. He left because it was a jihad to flush the armies out and to prevent bloodshed from Najaf al Ashraf. <coughs> so that was a political movement. He did a rally from Basra. He arrived in Kuwait, then rally from Basra till Najaf, a rally with the many people. The Hashd al-Shabi, those who fought Daesh, that was a political decree. So Sayyidi Sistani, though he does not practice, he has given because he has the authority to give political decrees. So the ignorance, they try to, oh, you will like the fucking command, the anti will like the pro will like the. Who said that? That is wrong. It's wrong. It's haram to create fitna amongst the mu'minin. <coughs> That's shaitan's work. We have to bring people together. We have to, we have to unite our mu'minin. Not divide them. Dividing is the aim of shaitan. Uniting is the aim of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib So if you are a Shia of Ali then work on unity and not division. And when I say unity, unity amongst the whole community. These people, they are not anti-taqlim. That's fine. They are my brothers in the wilayat of Amir Mu'minin They hate me. That's fine. Because Habil and Qabil, Qabil said, I'm going to kill you. Habil says, if you are going to, it's in the Quran, if you are going to stretch your hands to kill me, I am not going to stretch my hands to kill you. You see? So let these people who hate you, that's fine. Be forgiving. 
be embracing. Many times I say Eastern Mullahs, Western Mullahs and the line of the Marja'iyya. The reciters on the line of the Marja'iyya. But trust me, if the Eastern Mullah comes to me, I will embrace him. With my differences with him. If the Western Mullah, the liberal Mullah, you see, anti-marja, because anti-marja, anti-marja, these two extremes, which our test, should we fight like cats and dogs? Or should we try to embrace each other? You see, they are doing Azadari of Imam Hussain. They are doing Azadari of Imam Hussain. We are doing Azadari. So there is a uniting goal. They are doing Wilayat of Amir Mu'mineen. We are doing Wilayat of Amir Mu'mineen. They are doing Wilayat of Amir Mu'mineen. There's a uniting goal amongst us. Let's unite to this. You, you will be, it will be, it will, you will be surprised. Look at the Quran's direction. We all recite Qul Ya Iyul Kafirun. Okay? Bismillah ar-Rahman. Just a reminder to our youngsters. Memorize this surah. It's a very important surah for the interfaith activities. Whenever I go into interfaith activities, I use this. In the time of Prophet ﷺ, there were Christians, they used to say, Jesus is son of God. Correct? Mubahala. Last night you heard the Urdu lecture. Okay? Mubahala. Jesus is son of God. There were in the time of Prophet ﷺ, Jewish people who say, Yahweh laughs, Yahweh comes down, Yahweh and God comes down, God goes up, God has this, God... So this is the, we don't support those characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To us, if somebody, follower of Ahlul Bayt, makes Allah uh, a physical uh, being, we say it's kufr in the circle of Ahlul Bayt. But we will respect them. Why? Because my Prophet respected them. We will respect those who are saying Jesus is the Son of God. Why? Because my beloved Prophet وسلم, respected them in Mubahala and gave them an option to either stay in the Christ on Christianity or uh, choose Islam. What about idol worshipping? It's a big taboo. Ha, <laughs> It's an idol worshipper. Ha, ah, no, no. This is Ahle Kitab. Look at idol worshippers. The Prophet وسلم, when he took over Mecca, majority were idol worshippers. Did he slice and dice them? No. Did he butcher them? No. Did he murder them? No. Did he capture them? No. He said, Idhabu fa antum Go. You are free. They were idol worshippers. Which is a big contradiction with Islam and with monotheistic religion. Big, huge con ideological contradiction. But the Prophet's heart was rahmatan lil alameen. Mercy for the whole worlds and generation, not just for his time. Alam, singular. Alameen, plural. So he's a mercy sent to all the worlds. That is time, now time, in future. So he said this statement to idol worshippers. Go, you are free. So now, look at Surah Al-Kafirun. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I know the youngsters, they have studied in Madrasa, so they will know what is the meaning of this, this ayah. Oh Muhammad, tell them. Tell who? The disbelievers. Oh disbelievers in Islam. And disbeliever is not a curse word. I am a disbeliever as well in Jesus being son of God. I am a disbeliever. I don't believe that Jesus was son of God. Okay? So when you say you disbelievers, shouldn't be, shouldn't be a curse word. It should be taken positively. You don't believe that a Quran is a miraculous book. That means you are disbelievers. So it's not a curse word. That kafir, many times people, they use it as a curse word. The Quran in context is a little bit different. Say, oh, you disbelievers in Islam, obviously. La a'budu ma ta'budun. I am not going to worship what you guys are worshiping. Okay? Wala antum abiduna ma abud. And neither you are going to worship whom I'm worshiping. Again, he repeats. Qul ya ayyu al kafirun. La abudu ma ta'budun. Wala antum abiduna ma abud. Wala na abidun. Repeating. Neither. No, 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 no. 
Don't you ever think that I'm kind with you, nice with you. My moral values are embracing you. That means I will worship what you worship. Never. No way. <clears throat> and you are also not going to worship what I'm worshiping. <laughs> this is the golden statement. The whole surah is golden. But Lakum dinukum waliya deen. To you is your religion. To me is my religion. Let's live together. Let's learn to respect each other. Okay? Let's build the society and not destroy it with bloodshed and animosity and hatred. You see, this is the message of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the message of Quran. It is mustahab to recite Surah Quliya al Kafirin in Namaz al Shab. You see, it gives you reflection not to become stubborn, not to become prejudiced prejudice, and start hating others. Now, here's the irony. Should we mention or should we sit quiet? No, we are going to mention because this is the member of Amr bil Ma'roof and the days of Amr bil Ma'roof and Naya al Munkar. The idol worshipper, the one who said Jesus is son of God. The one who is making God a physical entity. I have to respect him. So how, why can't I respect those who are Muslims who disagree with the vilayat of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi Why this animosity against Ahlul Sunnah? Let me give you something which you don't see hear from the member. Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam. For quite a time, in the time of the first Khalifa, and the time of the second Khalifa, and the time of the third Khalifa, he was not practicing, you see, his authority. There were others, their political authority. There were others, they were practicing. But when they needed the help of Imam Ali, those who hurt Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam, those who hurt, it's, it's not just differences. There's a serious problem. Those who burned the door of Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. Ya Ali, help us. Ya Ali, madad. Don't they say, Ya Ali, madad, kafir, kufur, shirk, kufur. Well, then they, there are some other kafirs. We are not the first kafirs. You see? There are others, they said it before us. Why aren't they not kafir? And why we are kafir? The, the X just came on our heads. They're the first ones to say. The first Khalifa, oh Ali ibn Abi Tab, help me. I'm in deep trouble. Astaghfirullah. Don't say that. Say, Ya Allah, help me. Uh. It's kufr. Shirk. No, Ya Ali, please help me. Okay? I mean, if I was in that time, I would have said. But Imam Ali did not say. Uh, uh, okay? Uh, but we would have said, <laughs> you know, don't say that. It's shirk. Call Allah. No. And then he says, ah, any problems and difficulties, if it was not for Ali ibn Abi Talib, I would not have got out of it. Don't say that. It is Allah who took you out. No. But Ali ibn Abi Talib was the cause. So where's the kufr and shirk here? No. And the second khalifa, subhanAllah. Times after times. Ya Ali Adrikni, help me out in this situation. Oh, don't say that. After 1,000 years, people will they say you are kafir because you are asking help from Ali ibn Abi Talib. You are telling me, Ya Ali Madad. After 1,000 years, your followers will say that you are kafir. Don't say like that. You see? Say, Ya Allah Madad. Ya Allah, help me. No. He said, and he said several times. And look what he said. Lawla Ali. If it was not for Ali, Allah, astaghfirullah, don't say that. Say if it was not for Allah, Ali, Omar would have been perished. No, 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 no. Ali helped me. Allah's uh, sabab, Allah's cause helped me. If it was not for Ali, Omar would have been perished. Several occasions. And this is not in the Shia books. It's in the books of Ahl sunnah wal Jamaah. You see? So now let's come to our Imam. Did he say no? You burned the door of Fatima to Zahra. I will not help you. Did he say that? No. no. See, the, the, the person who hurts, uh, the burns the door of Fatima to Zahra, he goes and helps them out. Why? 
because the Roman army was waiting to invade Islam. Didn't Imam Ali say, if I will raise the sword to Fatima to Zahra, if I will raise my sword, Islam would finish, it will disappear because the Roman army was waiting. Raising the sword of Imam Ali means civil war. Muslims fighting each other, Muslims shedding their bloods of each other, weakening. Immediately the Roman army comes and takes over. So Imam Ali had a bigger goal in his sabr, bigger patience because Roman army, as you know, in the history, they came to Mu'tah, there was a battle of Mu'tah. And then they came to Tabuk. Tabuk is inside Saudi Arabia nowadays. Mu'tah is in Jordan. So they came forward. And that's and then when Prophet came out for Tabuk, they back, they left. They they, 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 they they retreated. And when the Prophet was on his deathbed, they came back to invade Medina. And that's why the Prophet was very harsh in preparing the army of Usama son of Zayd. Oh. Let him go. There is a danger. There's an invasion. They say, Ya Rasulullah, you are sick. How can we leave you, Ya Rasulullah? Oh. Then the Khilafat will go away from us. This is my sentence. Oh. Okay. So how can we leave you, Ya Rasulullah? You know, go. Ya Rasulullah. Then Rasulullah passed away. And then after some time, he says, standing here. Why are you here? Didn't I say go? Islam is in danger. Go. May Allah's condemnation be on those who are not in the army of Osama. Except for Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. This was serious situation. So that's why, let's not say that why Imam Ali did not take the retaliation of Fatima to Zahra. Because many Sunni brothers, they raise this concept. If Imam Ali was so brave, Fatiha Khaybar, Fatiha this, why did he strike the people who came to, these people who came to burn the house of Fatima to Zahra? Well, Imam Ali was saving Islam by his patience. It was not a big deal for Imam Ali to wipe these people away and out. But there, there would have been a civil war oh. and that would destroy Islam because the Roman army was there. This is not spoken. So my beloved Imam, for the sake of Imam, for the sake of Islam, to protect Islam was working in unity with those who hurt his wife. Oh. Islamic unity. My Imam, whom say, Ya Ali, Ya Ali, Ya Ali, is the first person to practice Islamic unity. Where are we from? Lakum dinukum. If kafirs, we can say to you, we can tell our Sunni brothers, okay, you, you feel Khilafat issues, differences. Okay, to you are your thoughts, to us our, are our thoughts. We still are, uh, we still believe in one God. We still believe in one holy Kaaba, Qibla. We still have Salat. We, st we have a lot of commonalities. Let's respect each other and agree to disagree. For the sake of Islam, for the sake of Imam Ali's sacrifice and sabr, let's follow up that sabr. Now we come to the biggest irony. Should we say? We have to say. What is the biggest irony? We amongst ourselves, the Shias, the followers of Ahlul Bayt Ali. You see, Alam al Majlisi and many scholars, they mention hundreds and hundreds of riwayat of Ahlul Bayt Ali. That when a person dies, Imam Ali alayhi salatu salam comes, okay, inside the grave and does the intercession and does the shafa'at and helps us. There are so many riwayat. I'm just giving you one statement, summary statement of all these riwayat. Munkar and Akir will question. Baitu kiski taklid kar raay? Will they question? No. They will not question this. They will ask you, who is your God? Wow. Who is your Nabi? Who is, we do Talqeen. I don't know how many people they participate in a namaz -e janaza Is there in the Talqeen name of Marja or name of Taqleed or name of this type of Azadari or that type of Azadari? The only thing is the love of Masumin and the Vilayat of Masumin. So if Shafa'at, let's say I am, you think you are my Shia brother. You think my practice is wrong. You think. And I think my practice is right. You see? 
But still, I, be, I, I believe that this is right. But I still have the Tawheed. I still have the Nubuwan. I still have the Vilayat. Do you think I'm going to go to hellfire? And I don't think so you're going to go to hellfire just because your Azadari is different? Just because your Taqlid is different? Or just because you are from the following Eastern Mullah? Or just you are following Western Mullah? No. Inshallah, if that's the mistake and the person was not stubborn, did not have animosity uh, uh, towards his brothers in Islam, brothers in Shia, our Imams will do Shafa'at. Let's say this is a mistake. Why is this Shafa'at? To help us out in our mistakes which we were not aware of or we fall, fell into accidentally. So that is Shafa'at. In the Qabr, while, taking, uh, while the soul is dragged, there is a shafat of Ahlul Bayt. In the Qabr, Munkar Nakir, this is my person, please leave him alone. Wow. You see? So that is shafat in the grave and shafat on the Sirat until they make sure that you go into the paradise. That's it. So why don't we unite our beloved Shias? Whether you are doing taqlid, you are not doing taqlid, you are the Western Mullah ideology, you are the Eastern um, um, ideology, whatsoever. Or you are following the marja, Fulan, your friend is following the this marja, he's following this vilayat, you are following that vilayat. Let's keep this aside and unite on the main bigger goal. The vilayat of Amir al And I'm guaranteeing you, whoever creates disunity between the mu'mineen is from the campaign of shaitan. Campaign, because shaitan likes to disunite. Allah wants to unite. Yazid wanted to disunite. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to unite. Ya Yazid and Muawiyah, they wanted to do, they did fitna. Amir al-Mu'mineen was observing patience and sabr and keeping the whole community together. Where are we and uh, the, the, the etiquettes of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam in respecting each other, agreeing to disagree. So let's learn, let's start to, to, to try to see people when they come to us, they attack us. Okay, it's fine, my brother. Um, you don't follow Marja, it's okay. We still are brothers in the Wilayat of Amir Mu'mini. Let's agree to disagree. You see, let's agree to disagree. I criticize a lot the Eastern Mullahs, Western. But trust me, when they come to me, I embrace them. I embrace them. I love them. Why? Because they are my brothers in the Wilayat of Amir Mu'mini. The Muslims, they come. This Isn't this the moral as Sadiq al Amin? Wasn't the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amazing? <laughs> amazing moral character you have over Muhammad. He was with the idol worshippers. Dealing with them with amazing moral. We can't deal with amazing morals with our own brothers in Islam. With our own brothers in Tashayyu. You see, it's a very important thing. If we will not wake up, we will lose our generation. Because our generations, they hate this. Our youngsters, they don't like it. You see? And we are in our Middle Eastern cocoons sometimes. I'm talking about the followers of Sayyidi Sistani as well. <laughs> Nobody's perfect here. Every play, every group has some bad apples. You see? And these bad apples, we, if we can't eliminate them. It's a test of Allah. If one bad apple will go, another bad apple will come. It's a test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, we have to learn how to embrace each other and ignore the bad apples. Ignore them, neglect them. You can't eliminate them. One goes, another comes. It has been happening since 1,400 years. But let's like try to learn how we can ignore them. And, and whoever wants to come us with kindness and respect, we should start the kindness. Because Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wasalam, he used to start the kindness and love. So this is very important message. Today we were not able to uh, continue. So we are going to our topic from yesterday. But this is going to be our topic that shaitan wants to divide. 
between brothers and brothers. Habin and Qabin. The first, the, it was the second attempt to destroy the humanity. And then it goes on, human fighting each other, human fighting each other, until it comes to Karbala. Now, Karbala, we have some farewelling. This day, usually, they mention the farewelling of the uh, Imam Hussein a.s. I'll be frank with you, I tried to find authentic narrations about Fatima Sughra or Fatima Kubra farewelling the Medina. It's okay if you listen to the Masai, you can cry pretending that it's there, but there is no authentic historical text uh, about uh, Imam Hussein leaving a daughter in Medina al -Munar. So I'm not going to recite that part. However, I'm going to recite the Masai of farewell so that we can shed some uh, tears on Imam Hussein alayhi salatu islam and feel the pain of farewelling. So Imam Hussein alayhi salatu islam lived his entire life in Medina al Munawwara. And today, Imam Hussein alayhi salatu islam wants to leave Medina al Munawwara. Bless the heart of Imam Hussein. Imagine if you, have, uh, be, if you have been born in a city and you have been upraised in a city and now you are forced to live that, live, leave, leave that city. How painful the situation will be on your heart. Uh, and imagine this is not an ordinary city. It is the city of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, Imam Hussein has great memories uh, of his grandfather Rasulullah. How he used to play with Imam Hussein. Uh, how he used to feed Imam Hussein. Uh, so Medina is just not, not a Medina. Medina is being uh, under the shadow of Prophet Muhammad. Uh, so Imam Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam uh, comes to farewell his grandfather Rasulullah. And uh, a poet, an Arabic poet says, Dhummani عندك يا جده في هذا الضريح. I'm going to just say the gist of this poetry. Oh my grandfather, uh, the whole world is falling apart on me. I'm in distress. Uh, I'm in a difficult situation. Uh, I'm in a complicated situation. Complicated uh, situation. I have to leave you. I have to leave this city, my beloved city. Is there any possibility that you can embrace? me in this grave uh, and I can be relieved uh, and with sad and sad sorrow Imam Hussein alayhi salam uh, farewells the grave of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. how difficult time it is on the heart of Imam Hussein uh, who else Imam Hussein is going to farewell uh, he comes to his mother uh, Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam uh, imagine Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi salam is not dead he's alive his soul is watching Imam Hussein and the pain of Imam Hussein guess is Rasulullah happy no Rasulullah knows that he's going where he's going he's going to end up in Karbala and what about his mother Fatima to Zahra Imam Hussein comes to the grave of his mother Fatima to Zahra Oh my mother, uh, the time has come. Uh, Fatima the Zahra knows uh, where Hussein is going to end up. Fatima the Zahra knows where Zainab is going to end up. Fatima the Zahra knows what is going to happen in coming days. Bless the heart of Fatima the Zahra. And by Imam Hussein leaves Medina al Munawwara. And all the family, the Khandan, the tribes, and everybody was crying uh, as it was the day when Prophet Muhammad uh, left this world. Uh, everybody was farewelling Imam Hussein uh, and Imam, Imam Hussein's beloved one uh, because Imam Hussein left at the night. Uh, and Imam Hussein's farewelling was very painful. Uh, but come, let's take another uh, scenario of farewelling. Uh, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, uh, when all the martyrs, uh, all the companions were martyred, uh, Imam Hussein calls Al Min Nasrin Is there a supporter? Uh, 
who could support us? No, no response. Uh, Habib, where are you? Burair, where are you? Zuhair, where are you? Ali Akbar, where are you? My brother Abbas, where are you? Ali Azgar, where are you? No one is responding. The bodies are scattered on the land of Karbala. Imam Hussain alayhi salam with deep sadness comes inside the tent of Bibi Zainab. He comes inside the tent of Bibi Zainab alayhi salam. Imagine, imagine this farewelling. Let's take our souls to Karbala and watch how a sister farewells a brother and a brother farewells a sister. Imam Hussain alayhi salam said, my sister, no one is left now to support. The time has come. I need to farewell you. Bibi Zainab says, Okay, if that's the case, please come close to me. <laughs> Imam Hussain alayhi salam comes close to Bibi Zainab. And when he comes close to Bibi Zainab, uh, she says, Oh my brother Hussain, can you bring your neck closer to me? Oh Imam Hussain brings the neck closer <laughs> to Zainab. And Bibi Zainab uh, uncovers the neck of Imam Hussain and kisses the neck of Imam Hussain. Uh, and then look towards Medina and says, Oh my mother, I have fulfilled the trust you have given me. <laughs> Imam Hussain says, My sister, what did you say? What was the trust? She says, My brother Hussain, where our mother, when our mother was dying, she called me, Zainab, come beside me, come close to me. I came close to her and she said, uncover your neck uh, I uncovered my neck uh, and she kissed me and she told me Zainab this is Amanat this is the trust I am giving you in your hand when you see Hussein is left alone and there is no supporter for Hussein just kiss the uh, kiss Hussein on his neck uh, and fulfill the trust uh, they Zainab does Zainab know why this is happening? Fatima the Zahra knew. And Fatima the Zahra is in the land of Karbala. This was one farewelling. There's another painful farewelling. And I will end my majlis. When Imam Hussein was martyred, the caravan of Imam Hussein is leaving Karbala. And Bibi Zainab is without any scarf. She's a row tied with ropes and chains. She's on the camel which has no cover. And the camel was bony camel. When somebody sits on the camel, it's very painful and hurtful. And they were passing by the body of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Zainab is saying, Wa Muhammad, oh my grandfather Rasulullah, look at the body of Hussein scattered on the land of Karbala. His parts are scattered. Oh Muhammad, look at the head of Imam Hussein. It is raised on the spear. Oh Muhammad. Look at your daughter, how badly they have been captives. And there is one more riwayat which says, Bibi Zainab added one point, painful situation. How the head of Imam Hussain was cut. It was not cut from the front. It was cut from the back. Bibi Zainab says, Oh Muhammad, look at the head of Umar Hussain. It was badly cut from behind. And the blood is dripping from the head. Wa Husayna. Wa Madhuma. Wa Musibata. Wa Siyalamu al-Ladheena zhalamu ayya munqalabi yanqalibun. ألا لعنة الله على القوم الظالمين
والعاقبة للمتقين إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون May Allah accept our razadaris It's the time of salah so we'll just make it very short that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfill the needs of all our needy ones in the east of the world and the west of the world May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all the azadaran Imam Hussein in Karbala, in Iraq and everywhere on the face of the earth May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all our marhumeen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us always with our beloved 12th Imam. And give us the intercession of our Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Give us the blessings with the ziyarat of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And on the, from the religion, give us the ma'rifat of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. Wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Rahimeen. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ali الطاهرين